right? This is not a ride sharing video. I repeat, this is not a ride sharing video. What up, folks? Once again, it is your boy Tim, the handsome liberal. Ron DeSantis, Governor Ron DeSantis, is expected to announce that he is running for the nation's highest office this evening at approximately 6 p.m. Now, he's going to do it by way of Twitter uh, with the assistance of Elon Musk, obviously. Elon Musk wants to make Twitter the new, potentially, the new right-wing uh, news outlet. But we'll see what happens with that. Nevertheless, the question we're going to be asking today is, is Ron DeSantis a better option for MAGA? I understand, without a shadow of a doubt, many folks favor Trump, favor his policies, favor his boisterous, bomb-throwing nature. Many believe that he was mistreated while commander-in-chief and has unfinished business. Hell of a lot of folks favorite the Trump policies from 2016 to 2020. Nevertheless, it is undoubtedly the case where many believe if Ron DeSantis becomes president, you'll get the same policies, with very few exceptions. So why is it that MAGA, in particular, are starting to turn a blind eye towards DeSantis when he could give you all of the policies of Trump without the drama, without the court cases, without the tweets, why would you take the more drama-filled option? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Tim Scott's also in the race as of yesterday. Most of us do not believe that makes a damn bit of difference. However, there are a few Tim Scott supporters out there. So we're going to have you guys state your case. Wanted to get on, talk to the folks. As always, the program is and shall forever remain MAGA-friendly for its entirety. Nevertheless, liberals are welcome as well. Solemn promise we do not block, ban, or censor anyone for their commentary. If you do if you do enjoy civilized dialogue from both sides of the aisle without any fear of being blocked, banned, or censored, follow the program. Look it in the comments. Let's talk about Biden, says uh, 382. Well, if, if there's a subject on President Biden you'd like to discuss, feel free to type it in the comments. We do entertain subjects about Biden all the time. Uh, people do anything for clout. Ah, that is true. That is true. Uh, looking in the comments, you're still supporting Trump, man. Oh, my God. You know, what is it about President Trump that the mere support of the man turns the stomach of others? I'd love to know that. Nevertheless, I'm going to get back into the box. We'll start the program off with the one and only Truth Doctor. Good afternoon and welcome back to the program. The one and only underwater upside down pop up book reader. The only underwater upside down pop up book reader that you'll ever meet in your life. The truth, doctor. How you doing, buddy? Okay, fair, fair enough. So, Ron DeSantis for MAGA, would Ron DeSantis be a better option? Well, first of all, I think anything would be a better option than Big Bird and Elmo, but, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your guys is just tickle me Elmo. But um, I mean, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't think he he would be an option that we should consider because it quite frankly doesn't benefit the GOP to have him, you know, lose his governorship, potentially lose the election, not get his governorship back. And be out of politics for a while. Like, well, he doesn't. You know, wait, wait, wait a minute. He doesn't have to resign as governor yes, to he, run yes, for he president does right now. Yes, he does right now in Florida. They have not passed that yet. Yeah, they have not passed that yet. So, so, he, so, wait, wait, can, wait a minute. He, he could start. He so, could start if he announces, process. hang on, wait a minute. Hold on. If he announces that he's running for governor tonight. He isn't, I mean, for president tonight, he is no longer governor of Florida. Am I hearing that no, correct? No, that is not what I'm saying. You can campaign. You can campaign. But as soon as uh, it gets within 60 days, I think, 60 days of the primaries, it is not passed yet. See, everyone in the comments is saying it's passed. It's not. When you get 60 days within the primaries, you have to, that is when it kicks in. So you would have to resign it at that point. So, um, I mean, the primaries aren't for a little while, but. I mean, 
if he, he can announce it, he can campaign, but that uh, that law has not been passed yet in Florida. It has not been passed. So he can campaign as president, but 60 days before the primary is when he has to resign. I believe I believe that is what the FEC requires. I don't remember exactly what the, the election committee requires. I think it's 60. But um, yeah, that's 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 pretty much how it works. But now that being said, I think he's also banking on the fact that it will get passed before those 60 days. So, you know, it could it could all be for nothing. But I, again, that to me, that that for the GOP would be kind of a silly, a silly uh, risk. Right. Like, I mean, they both come from the same state. Right. And I mean, they're they're both really just knock they're going to knock heads like it's not going to help them. And I think if you want my personal opinion, I think this is a backup plan. I think it's a well, just in case, you know, what I'm saying just in case Trump does have a problem let's put you know uh him on the on the world stage but wouldn't that be a good backup plan if if you are correct it's just if you are correct that's the backup backup plan plan that means it's a a good backup plan then right i would say it's the only one at this point i mean honestly i love some scott but the dude ain't gonna win i mean i'm sorry he just you know he he screwed over some republicans he pissing people off and he's definitely not gonna get vp i mean i just don't think he's gonna get vp that wants to run with him and he just doesn't have the traction. And that has nothing to do with the skin color. It just has everything to do with the fact that he really honestly, you know, pissing people off. And, you know, DeSantis, whether or not you like him or not, has the, you know, national clout that he has right now. And, you know, for good or bad, for good or bad, he has the clout right now. Can't, but wait a minute. Wait, wait, I, don't think, I don't think there's anybody that believes uh, Tim Scott has a significant chance. But in regards to the Senate, and you're talking about him, you know, staying as governor of Florida because they want to keep him. Could he survive a doggy dog fight, dog eat dog fight with President Trump? Because his no. poll numbers with MAGA are already dropping and the fighting really hasn't began yet. No, he can't. He would never survive it. And quite frankly, he, he would be silly to do it. Um, he First of all, Trump has a shitload more money than him. OK, so um, that's pretty much stupid for him to do that. And second of all, um, you know, the GOP does not want to take a risk of a chance on someone that hasn't done it versus someone that has and someone that has the better polls. I mean, listen, this is all a numbers and money game like. The GOP is not going to say, oh, let's all throw all our support behind someone that doesn't have the numbers right now. And, oh, by the way, has way less money than the other person. Yeah, I'm, right. pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure GOP is like, no, we're not doing that. He would have no no chance. That's, that's number one. And number two, he would have no chance because DeSantis, DeSantis is is kind of his, his, little, his little buddy. And, like, I'm sorry to say it that way, but he Trump's daddy to him. Like and he's he's been daddy to him for a minute, all right? And and Trump Trump helped him get his governorship to begin with. So I mean I, I that that dude has no chance against him. And and I don't think he's going to. I don't think he's going to. I think it's all a ploy. I think it is a backup plan. And it is a backup plan for a reason. And might as well have him there. Might as well have him in place. Might as well put him on the world stage with, you know, Elon Musk kind of do the interview and everything. And might as well just kind of get the the you know. I don't think know, it's a, all right. Fair enough. I do got to move it on truth, but no, I don't no, think it's on. a bad background. I, I wanted to say this real one quick. Thing. Wrap it up. Go I ahead. I think that I was the longest guest that you've ever had yesterday. That was like forty minutes out of your box, and that was fun as shit. So I appreciate it. Anytime, come yeah, on back as always. Need, not what you want. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Make sure good stuff. The comments. Trump divided us. Don't believe me? Look look at us. We are fighting over stupid shit. Uh, Ray, I don't necessarily put all the blame in regards to division on President Trump. Do you see America as united before Trump came along? I think we've already, I think we were already divided to some degree. I'm not going to take away from the fact that Trump took division to a whole new level. I agree with that, but I do believe we were somewhat divided before Trump came along. He just did nothing 
in terms of helping unite us. I don't believe Trump ever really ran on a campaign of uniting America. He ran on a campaign of, I'm going to do what's right for America, in my opinion, and if it divides us, so be it. But at the end of the day, I'm going to do what I think helps America, and I think that's what he ran on. Uh, looking in the comments, how did Obama divide us? Well, Lauren, Obama's the first African-American president. Have you ever known the first African-American to do anything that was not divisive? The first African-American to play baseball was divisive. The first African-American to win a Grammy was divisive. Obama was going to be divisive no matter what he did. There is no way in American history for the first African-American really to do anything without it being somewhat divisive. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, looking in the comments. Obama, the great divider, says, guess who's back early? All right, fair enough. Uh, Tupac was controlled opposition. Tupac. How did Tupac get into this? I'm going to go back to the box. Real quick, Chris says, first African-American president that was supposed to be for the black community. He done nothing. Well, and that's something that is echoed by a lot of African-Americans as well. We elected a black president. He didn't do anything for us. You see folks in the right saying he didn't do anything for folks in Chicago. However, I will point this out. You get the first black president and someone like Chris in the comments starts talking, well, he should be doing things for black people. What do you think the rest of the country is going to say? We didn't elect a president for black people. We didn't elect a president for Chicago. We elected a president for all of us, for the United States as a whole, not just for black people. You're only looking out for black people. That means you are a racist. So that's what Obama would have heard if he was doing what you suggest. But then the moment he doesn't do it, we also hold him accountable for not doing it. Kind of falls under the category of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Going to the box. We'll keep it moving with... <laughs> I got to click on it just for the name. The Handsome Cotton. Okay, I don't know where else to go with that, but we'll make it happen. One handsome gentleman to another. Hello, 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 sir. It is the one and only. How are you? It's good to hear from you. Good to hear from you again. So what do you think? The Santa's a decent option for MAGA? Um, this time around, no. I think Why not? He needs to, I, think, I think he needs to stay in Florida, finish, his, finish what he started in Florida first, and then he can move on from there. I think I think that in order to gain the trust of the American public, especially the Republicans, he needs to finish the job in Florida first that he started. If Trump, for some reason, couldn't run, whether it's legal issues, whether he just simply got tired of being the victim of witch hunts, or unfortunately, if he had health issues and was no longer able to run, would you support this dentist? No, still no. I, I, he needs to finish the job that he started in Florida. Give me your two number. Give me your number two selection. If Trump wasn't able to run, give me someone else you think might also be able to fit the bill. Uh, Rand Paul. Hmm. Okay. Well, he's obviously not running. Rand, you you look at Trump as being favorable. Rand, does Rand Paul really align with Trump? If you like no. Trump's policy, no. They 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 actually um, they actually disagreed on a lot. But the, the thing about Trump and DeS and uh, uh, Rand Paul is they figured out a way to kind of meet in the middle. Right. Is uh, you have two strong willed people who are, are less strong willed enough. They're they're level headed enough to say, OK, fine. I'm not going to come your way and you're not going to come uh, you're not going to come my way. So let's figure out where in the middle at least we can we can have some sort of agreement on and we can we can kind of back each other's play as to what we can do moving forward even though as much as we want we know we're not going to give in as much as we want the other one to give in to. How would you respond to someone like be the goat in the comments stating that Rand Paul is not living in reality? Like in other words the, the America he wants it's totally illogical. How I don't I don't understand how how people can say that Rand Paul is not living in reality. Um, 
the man had his had his ribs broken by a by his liberal neighbor. Um, the man has given his life to public service. He has given his life to going down to Honduras and Guatemala and giving eye surgeries and uh, and uh, eye vision healthcare in Guatemala and Honduras and South American countries for free. He does that trip. Uh, um, what is it? Three months out of the year, he goes down there and he and he gives he gives healthcare for free for vision for for um, low income families down there. So I, I'm not quite sure what reality um, that guy is living in, but I'm pretty sure that Rand Paul is living a more base lifestyle than probably any one of us. Okay. Well, I'm looking in the comments, and yeah, they're hammering him. I mean, people say he's delusional. I mean, I'm seeing nothing but negative hey, comments what is, about. So Rand what is Paul. okay? So what is what is delusional? What is delusional about calling out the government and their and their spending on a daily basis? Like if you go to his so Facebook how you... or his Twitter, he actually calls out government programs that spend way too much money on stuff that we don't need. Like, why are we worried about a tick that lives in a in a wetlands where nobody lives and we're worried about that species and we're spending six hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year on it when we could be spending that money on something else? Did he call out the tax cuts? Uh, yes, he said that the tax cuts didn't go far enough. He says that there should have been more cuts. Okay. I mean, well, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't believe in income tax altogether, uh, which I I 100% agree that um, uh, federal income tax is is illegal. But okay, fair enough. Well, if, if obviously Rand Paul is not running for president. I didn't want to hear who your second choice was, but um, so at the end well, of it, go ahead. I I want to I want to make this very clear about um, about DeSantis. He cannot announce tonight. It's very important for people to understand that he cannot announce tonight because per FEC rules, per FEC law, per Federal Election Commission laws, you have to announce and gather and file an exploratory committee with the FEC first, and then you have to file the paperwork of announcing your candidacy for president of the United States first before you can announce. Otherwise, it it otherwise they won't allow him to uh, file his paperwork. He cannot announce. I don't I don't know if that's I got listen. I'm not going to just I literally just read the, I literally just read it from the FEC website. OK, I didn't I'm that's some news to me. Like I said, sometimes you guys educate me. But what you're saying is something I have never. So you're telling right, me, which is which is why Tim Scott, minute, right? Which you're is why telling Tim me Scott, for absolute certain you're telling me for absolute certain. Uh, Ron DeSantis is not going to announce he's running for president tonight. Yes, because if he does, they will not allow him. If he announces before he files any paperwork, they will not allow him to file any paperwork. That is why Tim Scott did the exploratory committee last week. And then the day after he filed the paperwork, he announced that he was running for president publicly. You cannot publicly announce before you file any paperwork. Per the FEC. Are you sure? Are you sure he hasn't filed paperwork already? I'm pretty sure that they would have announced. Yes, they would have announced that they that he has filed paperwork. That would have been leaked. That would have come out just like it was leaked that Tim Scott filed the paperwork the day before he publicly announced. Yeah, it's it's certainly been leaked that this man is going to run for president tonight. So uh, no, I don't know where. Not. I'm not pretty sure. I literally just read it from the FEC website. Yeah. So well, I don't know why NC Blue Dot is over here trying to act like she did something to come well because well i'll tell you why harris everybody on television including the fox news pundits are stating this guy's going to announce tonight and they're not saying what you just said they're not saying that I, that's fine they cannot say it all they want okay but all right when when was the last time that a republican did something of this magnitude and it hasn't been leaked before an announcement was made i mean come on like you're telling me that nobody in the FEC or nobody in the DeSantis campaign would leak it before he announced? Like, come on. Well, put it this way: we'll we'll discuss it tomorrow. I personally think you're wrong, but I don't. I'm not going to pretend like I'm a know-it-all. You might be right, but I tend to believe you're wrong. I mean, there's too many pundits saying that this guy is going to announce tonight for you right, to come on here. Right, but every single pundit said that Hillary Clinton was going to win. So. 
Well, that is true. And you also yourself personally told me in the midterms the Republicans were going to pick up eight Senate seats. And that I, didn't you're happen right. either. You're right. And, and, and we both know that there are things on here that I cannot say in regards to elections because I will get booted. So I am not going to talk about that. Wait a minute. You're trying to tell me something happened to prevent the Senate from the Republicans from picking up eight Senate seats in the midterms. I, you and I both know that I cannot talk about that on this platform. We both. Know All that. right, Harris, I got to move on. I wanted to hear that for certain. But come on back tomorrow. Let's see if what you're saying is correct in regards to Ron DeSantis running for president. I'd be very curious to see how accurate you are. OK. And uh, so also, I want to make it very clear um, that I got it literally from the FEC website. So if somebody would like to fact check me and prove me wrong that you must follow those steps first before publicly announcing, then I will gladly correct myself. But if the if the Federal Election Commission website is wrong, uh, then that that would be news to me. So All right. talk to you later, buddy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. Now, so to I want to point out, folks, sometimes information comes across that we believe. Sometimes we get information we do not believe. Yeah. Star. Appreciate the hat and mustache. Thank you. For instance, um, now that's a Trump supporter. My last caller was reading something off a federal website. What if that same federal website says that Trump lost the election? You think he'd believe that? So I just want to point that out. Sometimes we get information we believe and other times not. Yeah! Miguel, you guys are generous today with those hat and mustaches. Thank you. Uh, Trump, what does that say? Trump for prison and don't vote Republican with a hell of a lot of K's in it. Wow. Now that is from democracy fight. Trump for prison. I don't believe President Trump is going to ever be incarcerated. I don't believe that. But maybe some of you folks have a different opinion. Uh, get off Trump. Move to DeSantis. That's what we're talking about. Is Ron DeSantis a better option for MAGA? My beloved MAGA, always the program is and shall remain MAGA friendly. Liberals are welcome as well. What do I say? I don't block, ban, or censor anyone for their commentary. The fact that you might disagree with the host never means a damn thing here. Come on in the box. I'll give you plenty of time to state your point. Uh, by the way, tap the screen. I haven't been asking for that. Get your boy up to 15,000. 600 plus of you in here. Could be anywhere you want to be on this damn app. The fact you're here is always an honor. Ron DeSantis is trash. Trump 2024. When did Ron DeSantis become trash, Dwayne Thompson? I saw nothing but favorable comments about Ron DeSantis in the midterms. How did he become trash from November to now? What the hell did he do? All right, looking in the comments, we'll keep it moving. I cannot pronounce the name, so we'll just tap the screen due to the font of the name. DeSantis will be Trump. Yes, he is a better option, says JC. Wow, okay. Right now, the polls do not say that. But because Trump has so many court cases orbiting him, we don't know what may come out in regards to President Trump, in regards to the court cases, or in regards to his mouth. So he could say something that could turn off some of the voting electorate. It's not going to turn off MAGA. It's not going to turn off MAGA, but he needs some independence. He can't pull it. He can't do it alone with just MAGA. All right, my last guest I tried to bring up is freezing, so we'll keep it moving. Trump hates America. Wow. What would make you say that? Uh, Rays. Because I can't pronounce it. What would make you say Trump hates America? Wow. He is announcing on Twitter, not radio or TV, so the FCC papers don't matter. Heather, the FCC doesn't, huh? Because it's not on radio or TV, you're suggesting he can do it on the internet. And that somehow skirts the FCC. I'm see, I'm hearing a lot of shit that I I'm going to plead ignorance on. I always enjoy talking to the folks. I'm certainly not a know-it-all, but is there a loophole that allows you to do things on the online? I guess the answer to that is hell yeah, because we can do a hell of a lot of things that on television you would be fighting for. I don't know. That's interesting. That is an interesting statement. Left wing and right wing attached to the same damn bird. Ignorance is not bliss. I don't know in this environment, Mike Tyson. Let me keep it moving. Uh, Johnny. Hello? 
Johnny Z. Walla? I know why my last guest didn't come up, but nevertheless, here's Ron DeSantis, a better option for MAGA. Johnny, good afternoon. What's going on, man? Thank you for allowing me up on here to speak for a few moments. I appreciate it. Not a problem uh, at all. As far as DeSantis goes, I don't agree with, with everything he does. I mean, actually, you're not going to agree with everything a leader does, a political person. But, however, he has a good mindset when it comes to the fiscal cliff of what it is to the economic growth of things in our country. And I really believe that if we had Trump run as the main card and then have DeSantis as VP, that would be something. And it's uh, but we're that not going to get that high. though. But, but, but I'm just you know, you and it, I both know we're not going to get that. I know, but I'm just saying, if we did, that would be a powerhouse right. consumption. And the thing is, what I want to talk about, and I, I hope it's not sidetracking too much from what you got going on, is wait they a minute, just but I'll let you. I'll let you raise that question, but before we do, in regards to a Trump DeSantis ticket. Most of the time, the VP doesn't really do shit. You think, you, do you believe DeSantis would be willing to take a back seat and let Trump do as he will? Yes, I think I think he would be willing to take the VP spot because he would go in there with the mentality of learning what's going on without having any acceptance or responsibility for the main choice made. Now, what, about, what, about the, what about being dirty? And what I mean by being dirty is if you become the VP under Trump, a lot of his drama, now they're going to hold you accountable for that if you run in 2028 or 2032. Just like, just like but, for instance, if Dick Cheney ran for president, they're going to bring up the war that Bush started. So right. DeSantis, DeSantis doesn't have that dirt on him right now. But what I'm saying is if you had DeSantis as a VP, all right, he would be willing to take the backseat to Trump, like I said, to be able to get the acknowledgement, to get the experience, to be able to be in position to where if anything happened, collusion or something happened to Trump, you know, God forbid somebody take a shot at him, he's in position to take place. You know, you have to think from a political mindset. These people are out and bloodthirsty for each other's positions at all times. The political background is a bloodthirsty swamp of what it is in itself. These people are trying to fight for their positions for the power. People get addicted to power. I don't care what nobody says. And people who are politicians are no different. They get addicted to that power, that mindset. Everybody gets... Well, some... you, well you gotta realize some people suggested that January 6th was because Trump was addicted to power, but in regards to President Trump, nobody's gonna take a shot at the guy. Everybody loves Trump, right? What was your other topic? My, well, I will say this first before I bring on the other topic. I love Trump for the simple fact that, check this out, that man is feared by world leaders, whether he's in office or not. He is the only president to walk into Kim Jong-un's facilities and country without any special force or agents, walked in there by himself. Name another president who's got the balls, let alone the tactics, to walk into another leader's country without any backup, by himself, solo, and talk to that leader and tell him, you're going to denuclearize, you're going to drop this, or we're going to war. He said that well, by you Well, if you want to point out a brave leader in regards to President Trump walking into North Korea without backup, Vladimir Putin told the, told the United States if they gave any more assistance to the Ukraine, they would likely face a recourse that they've never seen before. And but Biden responded by Biden. Biden. Huh? Also, that's under Biden, though. Vladimir Putin yep. would not exactly. have pulled that's the, the, that's the point they, I'm trying to make. Yeah, that's, that's the that's point the, I'm trying to make. Right, but also what I'm saying is Vladimir Putin would not have pulled half the stunts that he has pulled in the last two years if Trump would have been in office. There's no way. Yeah, but think about what I'm saying. Think about what I'm saying. Vladimir Putin threatened the United States and basically told Biden, if you continue if you continue helping out the Ukrainians, you can face a raft of Russia that you've never seen before. And right. Biden responded by stepping up the support to the Ukrainians. So when yeah, you talk but, about bravery, when you talk but, about bravery, here is Biden staring Putin in the face and saying, I'll raise you $20. You don't yeah, see that? But, 
But that, but that did nothing but hurt the American people and a worldwide consumption economy growth in itself. Okay. Because we can we can debate that, but I'm just talking about in terms of bravery. I don't think that's bravery because done. check this out because that's behind the whole XTI scandal of crypto. We have contributed 188 billion dollars to Ukraine so far. We have raised our debt deficit to a new record of 17 trillion dollars under Biden. That's not Trump. It's not anything of Trump's doing. That's Biden. But just but you mentioned you mentioned him stepping into North Korea as a sign right, of right, bravery. Right. Biden yeah. has stood up to Vladimir Putin. Do you and not I'm, see any bravery? I, I, I make, but I'm making a point. Biden's doing that for his own, I guess you could say, script or own manifestation because he's okay. making money off of it. He's not doing okay. it for the American people. He's not doing it to be a brave leader. He's doing it because he knows the more money he pushes to Ukraine, the more money he's going to make off of it. That's that's the simple truth of it. But, it's you, but, but at the end of the day, regardless of what reason it, you may suggest that it is, he stood up to Vladimir Putin. Is that not a brave action? I don't believe so, not on Biden's part, because technically, at the end of the day, I think that right there in itself was Biden's choice by greed, and also it was his administ- it was his administrational duty under the NATO agreement to give that funding. He can't step away from a contractual agreement under NATO simply because another world leader says, "If you do this, I'm gonna do this." That's not bravery. That's just simply okay. sticking to your duties. Now, so the other point I wanted to bring so up. So if he had not stuck to his duties and backed down and decided to not continue supporting the Ukraine because of Putin's threat, would we be calling him a coward? No, we would be calling it itself an insufficient economy growth. It wouldn't even be brought up in itself. Now, I personally think Joe Biden is a coward. He was the governor of my home state long before he ever hit the big leagues. And he messed Delaware all the way up before he ever even came into any kind of political office or view in the White House or Congress. That man is an idiot. I mean, you could see. Johnny, I got to say this. I mean, I don't think you're I'm not here to defend Biden, but based on what you're saying, I don't think you're judging him fairly. I mean, if he stood up to a guy threatening to to hurt the United States, it's just his job. But if he stands down, I mean, I, I rather regardless of his job or not, he could have stood down. He, he could have. Not, I not get only what you're did, saying. But, not only did he stand up to Vladimir, he actually stepped up the amount of assistance giving them. He has stood up to Putin over and over again. I understand what you're saying, and I know where you're going with it. But to me personally, to end that right there, I'll say I don't think that's an act of bravery on his part. Like I said, I think it's mostly a motivation of greed. That's why he's doing it, and his obligational duties as contract of being the leader and representative of the United States. That's just simply that. Now, the other point I let wanted to make. This. Let me ask you I'll let you make it, but let me ask you this. Who yeah. do you think, in terms of Vladimir Putin in Russia, which president do you think would be the best for Russia in terms of military strength, in terms of their prowess worldwide? Which president would they be doing better under, Trump or Trump. Biden? Trump, obviously. Trump had the respect of all, Trump had the respect of the Pentagon and the generals and the leaders. That ain't what I asked you. I asked you branches. which pre- no wait wait a minute. Well, that ain't what I asked you. I said which country, which president would Russia be doing better under you're saying Russia would be doing better under Trump than Biden. Oh no, that right there, that question, no. Russia's doing way better with Biden in office here because Russia, Putin knows that he can push the limits slowly but surely on what he's doing with his own agenda. I mean look, less than a month ago, China and Russia both backed their currency by the gold standard and made threats against the US, but you didn't see that in the news. You didn't see that anywhere. You didn't see where China's emperor basically said that the United States will feel the poverty that my nation has felt 
over the decades. And then Russia said that the fires that will bring from the lands will be seen at every house and the front doors of every American. He made those threats whenever China gave him that gold necklace, which was the emblem of a servitude and contractual agreement between China and Russia linking together. So, to so you, believe, you believe right now Russia is in a better predicament than they were when Trump is in office. You think Russia's doing better now that Biden is in office than they were with Trump? Yeah, when Trump was in office, he was pushing mad tariffs against uh, against China and Russia and was costing them loads of money and was bringing down the debt deficit for us, which was messing them up on their growth and economy because they weren't getting the be- the main, I guess you could say, construct of their product inventory that they were sending to the United States, they were getting kicked in the ass. Look, like, let, let me give you, I'm going to give you a few reasons why I vehemently disagree. First of all, under if Trump was in office, many suggest that the war would never have happened. If the war did yeah. not happen, that means all of the military equipment that Ukraine has destroyed in Russia, they still right. have. All of the dead soldiers that the Ukraine have killed in Russia would still be alive. All of the Western European trading partners that have now been prevented from trading with Russia and preventing them from exporting their fuel would still be trading partners. But now that Biden is president, they've lost a hell of a lot of military equipment. A lot of Russian soldiers are dead to the point where they're having to impose a draft. And now they cannot export their fuel to a host of nations. But you think they're in a better position now? Yeah, but see, they took the backdrop door whenever that happened. And whenever they pushed their economy behind the gold standard, they pushed the long-term game plan. Because now that the fact that them and China both have pushed their economy behind the gold standard, it now gives the American corporation incentive to push us behind this CBBC cryptocurrency, which is ran by Fed now. And we're trying to model ourselves after China, which is a big mistake. Fed now. Fed now has been in China for over four years, and they want direct control over every American's money, assets, and real estate. Yeah, when you're talking about, you're talking about about China. How about the, how about the, how about the fact that Vladimir Putin, now that he's considered a war criminal, is not even free to travel the world anymore? You think he's better off under this condition? I, I can't make claims to that because I don't know the jurisdictions of his travel completely. I mean, there's ways around everything. I mean, but at the end of the day, let me go ahead and go to this next point. And I want to hear you. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. They just announced, I think it was less than two weeks ago, uh, they, that they wanted to introduce the idea of not having presidential debates this year or this the next election. And right. that in itself is to me is un-american and it takes away our free reign right of knowing what's going to happen and the debate in itself is a process of the american patriot to where we're able to actually analyze see and produce the terms of what we wish to vote for and they're trying to take that liberty away from us now what do you think about that the fact that they're trying to not have a presidential debate i'm with you i believe to run for office you should have to debate but trump stated all of my competitors are so far down it ain't even worth my time trump has already indicated he does right but, he will still show, but trump will still show up you know trump he any chance I, he wait, show wait, up. wait a minute what whether he will show up or not you might be right but at the at the end of the day i gotta take the man at his word if he's going around holding rallies saying he might not debate i'm not going to pretend like he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about he's going to show up he is telling us I'm probably not going to debate these guys. That's just his ego talking. He, we all know Trump has a giant ego when it comes to things. He says that now, but if he gets a chance to show up and debate all these other people and put them in their place and shine all of their past history malfunctions, Trump's going to take that chance. Well, but He's I have to. to ask you, as a as a as a guy seeking the nation's highest office, if he's willing to lie to the people and say some crap just for his ego purposes, what else is he willing to do that for? If he's I going mean, to say he's not going to debate, how many what, else times, is, what else might he be misleading us on? Well, hang on though. When Trump was in office, how many times did we hear him in public public interview say one thing and then turn around and do another? 
How many times did we see that happen while he was in office? That's the reason he's not in office now is people want more clarity than that. No, the reason he's not in office now is because the feds and the political party of the Democrats did a witch hunt against him and wasted $100 million on reports against well, him and they found no collusion. They wasted well, almost you gotta, $100 million. And that's not including the money wasted under the I, Mueller report. I, I got to move it on, Johnny, but I will say this. If the Democrats did all of that to him, you sure have a hell of a lot of Republicans that are not accusing him of that. Mike Pence is not even agreeing a with lot you of on people that. In the, a lot of people in the Republican Party Party do not agree with Trump and the extremes that he's willing to go to or his views on things, but Trump is an extremist to that count. He doesn't think like the average president that we've had in the past. He's not in anybody's pocket. He's the first president we've ever had in office that makes his own money and was a billionaire long before he ever stepped in any office. He's got more dirt on people in political office, the cabinets, the Congress, the Supreme Court judges. He wait, has wait, dirt wait, wait, wait. If he has has all that dirt, the man has served a whole term as president. Why have we not heard about all of this dirt yet? Because they're trying to cover it up. I'll give you an exact example. If you follow me, I'll follow you back. I'll give you the last word. I got to move it on, but I'll give you the last word. Go yeah. ahead. But, but I'm just saying, send me, look, I'm going to send you a follow right now. All right, I'll send you a follow. Follow me back, and I will give you direct link source to where you can read yourself all of these things that I'm talking about. I will never sit and talk about something that I don't know or I have not spent hours and hours and hours researching myself. Y'all can call me delusional in the comments all you want, but guess what? All of y'all are sheep if you think you know what the hell's going on. I will blow all of your minds with proof documentation, and it will have you scared for your life on what's going on right now. Most Right, hey, hey, send me what you got. Excellent talk. My door is always open. Thank you. you for allowing me to come in. Have a nice day. Y'all be good. Absolute, absolute. Anyway, folks, I always make that solemn promise. It's not about whether we agree or disagree. Obviously, me and the last caller disagreed on probably even the color of the sun. Nevertheless, I do believe in free speech. I will always defend free speech. And if he sends me something, that certainly makes me realize that what he was saying was more correct than I thought. I have no problem coming on the program conceding the point to you and actually telling him he was right. It's not about being a know-it-all. This is That's not the kind of person you're interacting with. I'll concede points all day because I am willing to admit I don't know every damn thing and neither do you. That's the whole purpose of the program is to show that if we can exchange ideas and conversation from both sides of the aisle in a civilized fashion, they can do the same shit in Washington. They're just not trying. By the way, tap the screen. Get your boy up to 25,000 likes. I'd appreciate that. Let your thumbs not be lazy. It always helps the algorithms, brings in more MAGA. The program is MAGA friendly, always will remain MAGA friendly. Nevertheless, it is what it is. All right, look at in the comments. HTF, you bury info if a man can call a new conference. I don't, I don't know if that's aimed at me or not. Exactly, it's about truth. None of us know everything. We have to use our best judgment. Spot on comment, just another conservative. I love that. Uh, looking in the comments, Biden said he ain't debating, which is good because he can't make one coherent sentence. Well, when Biden stated the, the well-known phrase now, won't you shut up, man? We all remember that. He put together a good sentence on that. I think Biden did all right at the correspondence dinner. I think he did all right at the State of the Union address in January. I think he did okay. Now, Biden debated Trump twice. When Biden debated Trump, we were being told he's in the beginning stages of dementia. He doesn't know where the hell he's at most of the time. He can't read without a teleprompter. He cannot string together two sentences. When he debated with President Trump, not once did President Trump state the whole time he was debating me, somebody was feeding him answers on the teleprompter. Trump didn't say that, and he was on stage with the guy. He was responding to Trump like that. Even though we were told he was in advance or beginning stages of dementia or something like that. So I don't know. I don't listen, the guy is 80 plus, I get it, but I don't see where Biden is so out of it 
that if he went to do a huge contract on, on some type of business or something, the bank would be like, no, this guy is out of it. We can't do business with him. I don't see him like that. And I would also submit, when you look at the amount of crimes that his detractors are accusing him of, I don't think you guys see him like that either. Because if he has dementia, you can't hold him accountable for all of this shit. All right, look at in the comments. That's why we need to cut the age limit to 60. Tell that to MAGA. They're not going to like that. All right, going back to the box. We'll keep it moving. I got the Joker, but I don't have a name. Okay, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Yeah, Paul, thank you for that. Mary E, better yet. Thank you for those Pauls. Appreciate it. Appreciate your generosity. I don't know what's happening with the box. Uh, Crystal, thank you, Crystal B. Allen. Uh, one year golf, I don't get that. If Dems put young guy in there, it's over. What about Gavin Newsom out of California, James White? Uh, Trump all day, 100%. Move to Florida. See how much Republican love, how much Republicans love you. Well, they, the NAACP attacking the ignorance. Yeah! Thank you for that TikTok cap. Um, the, the NAACP, what was it, yesterday or the day before, issued a warning to African Americans, a travel advisory, that if you go to Florida, your best interest is not being observed down in that state. A lot of folks pushed back and stated that the head of the NAACP actually lives in Tampa, Florida. Nevertheless, there is a Hispanic group for which I don't know the name, but they also issued a travel warning for Hispanics going into Florida. So <laughs> it is what it is. Florida is an interesting place. All right, let me go back to the box. I don't know why my folks are not coming up. We'll try it with uh, Farlow. Let's see if it works this time. Appreciate you folks holding on. Good afternoon, Farlow. Asking a question, would Ron DeSantis be a better option for MAGA? By the way, tap the screen. 35,000 likes as possible. Let your thumbs not be lazy. Good afternoon, Farlow. Good afternoon. So I do think? For MAGA... I don't think they like him because uh, Trump doesn't like him. So I don't I don't think that would be a better choice for them if they don't like him. But wait a minute. You started out by saying you don't think they like him because Trump doesn't. Are you suggesting that MAGA is literally basing who they think the, would be a good political leader simply on Trump's opinion? I'm not going to say Trump's opinion, but let's let's put it this way. The MAGA move has started under Trump. So. Um, right. Before before Trump, there was no MAGA. So you're saying MAGA, this is your new this is your new person, and and it's like well, he's not approved by Trump, so we don't know if he's our new person. Just like when Ronald Reagan uh, left and his vice president came in, Bush, the first Bush, he told him winning for the giver. He gave he he passed the torch to him. Trump wants to pass the torch to DeSantis. DeSantis doesn't want the torch. He wants to go ahead and jump ahead. If I'm DeSantis, I don't jump in the 2024 race. I wait because if Trump loses or win is the win-win for the census because you have eight years of a Democrat. America is going to be primed for a Republican. And if Trump wins, he only can run for four years. Then DeSantis can run after Trump. So it's a win for him for DeSantis to stay out of well, the race. I think, a, there is a, I think he's there running is from a, his policies. There is another avenue that you're not, I don't think that you're taking in consideration. You're saying uh, DeSantis should sit it out and wait for 2020 and it's a win what I, the avenue you're not considering is being heckled by Trump. Even if Trump loses, if Ron DeSantis does something in Florida that Trump does not like, such as endorse somebody or whatever, Trump's going to, even if Trump loses, he's not going to go quietly into the night. So it is possible that Ron DeSantis could sit it out and still be heckled to death by President Trump. I think after four years, I don't think Trump would reemerge. I think it'd be it'd be safe for DeSantis to come out and and win the presidency or run for. I don't think he would win, but I think he would, he could run and have a decent shot at it. Could he do it without if 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 DeSantis set out to twenty twenty eight, and Trump decided in twenty twenty eight to go with his one of his children or in my opinion the best candidate for MAGA if you wanted to get the same policies without the drama of Trump would be Sarah Huckabee Sanders but that that's here neither here nor there but let's say Trump endorsed Sarah Huckabee Sanders in 2028 and Ron DeSantis wanted to run 
But Trump is endorsing the other candidate. Do you think Ron DeSantis could even win then? It depends on how well uh, Trump's presidency went in those four years. Oh, shit. That matters too. Well, he, lo- it, he just it lost was- it right now, and, and the love for Trump is still pretty strong. That's because the economy sucks right now. The economy was good. No one would be saying anything. Uh, yeah, but what about the Ukrainian Russian event? I mean, there's other shit but going there are on. People who say if Trump was in office, that wouldn't have happened either. So it's like, bring him back. He did do some good. It's like after he gets out, now he did good. It's like they wouldn't admit it when he was in office, but now he's out. Oh, yeah, yeah, bring that guy back. The economy was better when he was in office. Yeah, bring him back. Yeah. So what about and that's yourself? Why he might win. And- that's why he might win. Even- say that again. warned us i don't know if i love that yeah no somebody was calling me anderson cooper warned us that he's doing it again and he's right (laughs) trump is coming and he's running like he said he's running hard like he's running to win so we best be best be mindful of that because the economy does suck again or low we want to call it hold on one second but that's all i have to say i have to take this call all right, appreciate you coming in. All right, my caller apparently. My caller had a call. All right, uh, and I see folks saying we need Trump. Now, whoa, now here's one. Gabriel, I wish you were in the box, but Gabriel said the economy is better now. So you're suggesting, Gabriel, that the economy is better right now than it was under President Trump. Am I getting that correct? Because I see that in the comments. Sabrina says we love Trump. All right, Trump ruined the economy, says Liz Martini. Uh, Trump inherited Obama's economy. I hear that quite often. And by the way, when Trump took office, we did have a strong economy. Obama did leave behind a better economy than he inherited. So there's no denying that the economy went up under Biden. Uh, under, Under Obama, rather. Now, under Trump, Trump certainly improved the economy. But with COVID and the pandemic, It was not better than it was when he became president. If you want to look at the Trump economy for the first two years, there was no doubt it was on an upswing. He was doing a good job with the economy, but pandemic happened, and that's a whole different ball of of wax. Uh, How can most conservative politicians say they are Christians? Gary, I would love for you to elaborate on that. What about conservative politicians is anti-Christian-like, to make you ask that question? Due to COVID, Trump's economy was bad. That is true. Attacking the ignorance. Appreciate the hat. Thank you. Let's go to you. Attacking the ignorance. Friend of the program, welcome back. If it lets you in, good afternoon. How you doing? How you doing? It's a pleasure. Ron DeSantis, you think he's a better option? No, he's a worse option. Worst, so you believe Trump is a better option than Ron DeSantis then? Well, Ron DeSantis is a little bit more smart than what Trump is, so he'd be a little bit more dangerous. Um, I want to make a couple comments. Uh, sure. One, one, of the, one of the comments made to you about a, a year, something about Trump in a year. He played golf for an entire year, 340 days out of a four-year term. But people still believe he got things done, even if you want to point to how much he was on the golf course. Yeah, people well, believe. He, he, well, the first thing is, is he lied to the American people, said that he wouldn't be playing golf like Obama did. Uh, he did do he, that. He, he would be too busy working for you, the American people. So he lied to them right off the bat. So that's one lie. At a cost of $185 million for that one for the one year playing golf, which Obama played 227 days uh with over that right at 220 million dollars over an eight year to, uh, over eight years so t- trump would have spent almost 400 million dollars playing golf if he was to get four t- uh two let me ask you this though yeah. how would you feel mm-hmm. if the president did something that you really you really favored whether it's obama trump biden whoever let's yeah. say the president you know it, got some legislation done or got something done that you really favored and right. you found out he got it done through a negotiation on the golf course. Would you have a problem with that? 
No, due to the fact that, that a president is supposed to be working 24 seven, whether on the golf course or the porta potty. <laughs> He's a president 24 seven. But the thing is, this, it's the hypocrisy of saying, I'm not going to do something as I call somebody else out, but don't listen to what I say and don't pay attention to what I do. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Also, also in regards to Joe Biden having dementia, um, if you remember correctly, Donald Trump said that there were airports in the Revolutionary War. Yeah. Donald Trump also couldn't read off a piece of paper a really simple word of Yosemite. He said Yosemite, Yosemite. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, when, when they try to talk about Joe Biden can't read off a teleprompter, yet Trump stutters as he's reading and fumbles his words, doing the same thing. Yeah, but you got to admit, you have to admit, Biden has a hell of a lot more gaffes than Trump. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Donald Trump is coming off Air Force One. You have the beast parked right in front of the stairs. He walks to the right missing the the beast his limousine and he has to be redirected back to the car you ever see that you well, never we, saw that video no i didn't see that but my first question is going to be was there crowds or something that he was trying no, to go interact with because was, no the beast was parked right at the bottom of the stairs of the steps of air that, force One. that's not what i'm asking you that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is if the cameras are aimed at the car in the stairs of the was aircraft there, I mean, was there an you, audience yeah, you don't know what else no, is no, out no, there. No, 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 there wasn't. He wasn't walking to an audience. He was walking to another car, and a CIA agent had to point him over to the beast. There was. He well, was not going to an audience. He wasn't going to shake hands. He was just walking to the right to another limo. Okay. That's All what right. I say. But anyway, anyway, the thing that, you know, Donald Trump right now, just like when he was on stage at the town hall, and Caitlin uh, Collins asked him about the, the, the debt, right? Okay. He goes, I don't care. Yeah, that I'm, was terrible. I'm I know what you're getting I'm at. Yeah, that I'm was terrible. President. He doesn't care. So the thing is this, he only cares if he's president. He doesn't care if it falters and harms the American people, even the ones who love him, unless he's president. Yeah. yeah, that was a terrible answer. I don't have any other, I can't rebut that at all. For him exactly. to say that, and he, well, I'm not president. That was plus a terrible have, answer. Plus you have all these court cases. You have the, the, the judge just telling him just yesterday, stop talking about this or you're going to have, you're going to have some repercussions. Yeah, what he does did. Donald Trump he did do? He puts out a fake letter from his lawyers. His lawyers didn't write that letter asking for a meeting with Merrick Garland. That is not a well put together letter from <laughs> as, as a lawyer. Those were Trump's wow. words. So wow. if, Donald Trump, if Donald Trump is innocent of all this, why is he wanting to talk to the Attorney General Merrick Garland to have them stop investigating him? If he didn't do anything, why doesn't he the law and order president, as he claims he was while he was running, want to have the legal system do its job to clear him. If you well, not... got... let ahead. me say it this way. And by the way, Chris, yeehaw, appreciate that hat and mustache, Chris. The reason Trump is saying this, and I'm just simply looking at it from both sides, is Trump yeah, know, believes that that's the, how you the... are. Trump believes the system is after him. There's a witch hunt after him. So he doesn't, he's not going to want to let the system take its course because he believes the system is corrupt. Well, the thing is, you and I, you and I both know what I'm, what I'm going to say is going to be true. The court system is using his words and his actions. They are not making anything up. They are using his rhetoric in regards to January 6th. They are using his non uh, com uh, non importance in regards to the attack while he sat for four hours watching TV and then came out with a video saying, "Stop this! It's no good." They're not taking. They're not faking his phone call to Georgia. I need eleven thousand seven hundred and eighty votes. Well, let me let me interrupt you. 
Yeah, First yeah. of all, in regards to them not making it, <laughs> in regards to them not making anything up, I gotta say the Durham report would disagree with you. Also, in regards uh, to no, January, no, 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 no. Wait I'm a sorry, minute. Sorry, wait sorry, a minute. Report. I'll let you. I'll let you respond to it. All I'll right, let you right, respond right, to right, it. All right, all right, all right, all right. But also in regards to January six, even though I don't have anything good to say about what happened on January six, there is no denying that some video footage was hidden of how some of those folks were let into the Capitol building voluntarily. We didn't see that. I, I do believe folks broke in. I know they had nefarious goals, but we never saw the video of Capitol Police letting them in there. So in regards to President Trump, I'm not saying the guy is innocent, but I am saying that the way he is being reviewed is biased. There are folks that are hiding information apparently that might would have helped them out a little bit. You don't well, see that? If, well, if the video, if the if the the forty thousand hours of video show something different, how come uh, Kevin McCarthy only gave it to one person? And it, hasn't ever, yeah. and it hasn't been shown. Yeah. So if, well, there, was the, other, but, if there was other, if if there was other incriminating uh video out there it would have already, already been shown but the thing is this they're using trump's words they're using trump's actions they're using trump's own people who testified under oath about him they're using the phone call they're using the memos they're using the doc uh, the, the text messages they're using the emails they're using trump's lack of importance of going out when the january 6 happened he sat watching TV for three and a half hours, 100, 187 minutes, I think it was, where he's not doing anything in regards to that. He himself said, the documents, they're my documents, and if I want to show them to anybody, I can show them to people. I can declassify yeah. just, by, just by thinking about it. His lawyers <laughs> have been talked to by Jack Smith, and Jack Smith had to get a, uh, get a court to say, listen, you have to talk because now what you're doing is you're covering up for a criminal. You have you have yes. videotapes being doctored for Mar-a-Lago. So all these things, these they're they're not making anything up. They're using Trump. Let me ask, let me ask you this. Yeah, go ahead. I get your point. Let me let, let me ask you this because I always <laughs> I have to entertain wild comments when I see one. The Joker, <laughs> listening to you speaking, a gentleman in the comments said this guy definitely drinks Bud Light. How do you respond to that? What the oh, hell? I drink a, I drink a case of Bud Light every day. <laughs> what does it even matter? As, I, as, I, as I'm painting my fing fingernails different colors. Okay, that's kind of where I thought the it thing was is, cool. is the thing is this, the thing is this, handsome. I don't worry about I, my brains. My brain is the fastest computer on the planet, just like yours is. Idiotic comments don't make a difference to me because they they're a waste of time. They have no they have no emotional uh, uh, interaction with me. So people in the chat they say stuff. I don't care what they say because there's no there's no connection. These are just words. Well, you might you me. might favor you might favor this one. Okay. Dyer Wolf said Bud Light is better than Kool Aid. So. <laughs> well, I relate. I, well, when, it, when you're talking about Kool Aid and Trump, then I relate that to Jim Jones. Oh, and that's what they're talking about. That's, that's yeah, exactly. exactly what I'm yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that's that's so that's the thing. But r r Donald Trump, Trump supporters, you 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 know pretty much the definition of the word confirm, right? Yes. Confirm means. To acknowledge something happened, it's verify, truthful, yeah. whatever it might be, right? Yeah, verify. Okay. Donald, yeah, verified. Donald Trump has now been confirmed through the legal section, uh, through the legal process, from nine jurors, six men and three women, two Trump supporters. <laughs> he has literally been confirmed, hold being held liable for essaying a woman. Well, I'm going to give you the MAGA pushback. I got to move it on, but I'll give you the last word on this. Uh -huh. What about the notion that the judge, obviously his wife has donated to liberal campaigns. The judge prevented information that would have benefited President Trump from coming out at trial, thereby tainting the minds of the jurors. How Donald would you respond? Trump, Donald that? Trump's attacked his own, his own uh, uh, judges that he has placed.
his own judges that he's placed. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Done that. It doesn't matter what judge it is. It doesn't matter what attorney it is. Donald Trump is attacking the legal system because he's not. When he was a private citizen before being president, he could do whatever he want, and his money would get him out of it because he can prolong the case for years and years and years and years and years, making people go bankrupt. Now that he's president, was president. He has to face the legal system, and he does not have the means to stop it and stonewall it. He tries, but as you can see, it doesn't matter if he places a judge or somebody else places a judge. They are going by the legal judicial system in regards to doing what is, what is proper in our system of law and order. Donald Trump is being held accountable, just like E. Jean Carroll has filed another defamation suit because he again- Yeah, he, yes, he, he did. That he, is crazy. That's correct. <laughs> yes, and the thing is this, he, she doesn't, they don't have to go back to court to prove this. They're nope. just amending. They're just amending the financial responsibility to his actions. Wow! All right, attacking. You certainly did a hell of a lot of attacking this time. Thank Appreciate you. you I coming on. I, I got to move up for a while. Come on back anytime, though. Good talk. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right. In the comments, she sure did file. Well, he, he said, so, what did he call her, a kook or something like that when he was on CNN? He did call her some type of name or something like that, which he cannot prove. I mean, pretty much says she doesn't know what the hell she's talking about or something like that. So she did he, he, she did file an additional defamation suit. And my guess is it will result in some additional monies. At some point, you just got to keep your mouth shut. You know how many of us gentlemen out here have had women mistreat us? Not to that level, not to that degree. Thank you, attacking, appreciate it. You know how many folks that we've wanted to go off on? You, you walk out of divorce court or alimony or some shit, and you really wanna do something horrible? Sometimes you gotta learn to bite your tongue. And I do strongly believe, yeah, whack job. That's what he called her, a whack job. Appreciate that in the comments. But sometimes you gotta learn to bite your tongue. And like my last caller was stating, due to Trump's prominence, wealth, and power, he's never had to do that. But once he became president, there's a hell of a lot of folks on both the right and left side of the aisle that does not want him back in office. And his power is now being matched by other folks that have equally, if not more, power and wealth. So he can't just drag it out and bankrupt everybody anymore. Had he remained in the private sector with a guy like Michael Cohen on his side, he could have rode off into the sunset, a well-respected, very wealthy guy. But now that he's gotten into the White House and taking on some of the biggest enemies in the world, yeah, he's he's facing formidable foes. Uh, looking in the comments, I have no idea why he would want to be president with a country like this. Says uh, I don't have any idea why anyone at Trump's level would want to become president. I just do not. I mean, like I stated, you got all the money in the world. Everybody likes you. You're not going to run for president and have everybody like you no matter who you are. Mother Teresa could run for president and somebody would point out something she did negatively. But as a private citizen, everybody loves you. I don't have any idea why he was stepping away at that either. But he did, and he's doing it again. All right, keeping it moving. Gabriel. Good afternoon. Welcome to the program, Gabriel. Talking about Ron DeSantis, would he, would he be would Ron DeSantis be a better option for MAGA? I I think Ron DeSantis is way more dangerous than Trump. Ron DeSantis gets a lot of left wingers. So what what's, yeah. so what's dangerous about Ron DeSantis in your opinion? Uh, in my opinion, uh, just by looking at what he's done to Florida, he hit the last sentence on his book is he wants to turn the country into Florida. Now, I am to the left, I'll admit that, but I don't believe in cutting people's rights like he's going after the trans kids, the, the, the parents' rights, uh, parents of trans kids. They, they instituted a law in Florida where they can take their kids away. And even if the kid is not trans, just on the suspicion that, the, that a kid under their family is receiving gender affirming care, they can come in and take your kid away. That is a parental right 
to. But you're talking about what he did to Florida. Wouldn't it be safe to say that Floridians really love this guy? Did you see his performance in the midterms? Uh, no, I, I understand that Florida is red. And I make no excuses for the way Florida votes. I'm just saying the law that he, the laws and the policies that he's pursuing are fascist, and I believe they're dangerous. I don't believe mm. in taking people's rights away. As much as I hate people that didn't vaccinate, I recognize their right not to vaccinate. So why are you taking the right of a parent that believes that Jordan affirming care is the right? To decision for their kid, not yours, theirs, to pursue that treatment. Well, but yeah, you got parents that might think it's in the best interest of their child to spank their child or to leave a 13, 14 year old home overnight. They believe that what gender affirming care does to a child is akin to child abuse. And a lot of things we do in terms of government prevents parents from doing what they want to do. I mean, they're just chalking up gender affirmation care and basically saying a child should wait till they're 18 as opposed to doing something that could be permanently disfiguring or harmful while being a minor and then becoming an adult and wishing they never had done that to themselves. You don't see any way that well, could happen. The thing is, people are misinformed because there is no surgery. My caller is going in and out. We'll give it a second. Uh, liberals love to indoctrinate children the LGBT. Uh, you hold there? on, I'm cutting out. Okay, apparently my caller was going in. We'll, uh, we'll keep it moving. Slade says liberals love to indoctrinate children to LGBTQ rather than math and English. I, well, listen, I do believe that the liberal side of the hour is pro-LGBTQ and all the other letters. But in regards to your comment, liberals love to indoctrinate children to LGBTQ rather than math and English. We could suggest the saying that right-wingers love to indoctrinate children to Christianity or the Bible rather than math and science and things like that. There's a video online of a right-wing guy that's down in Mississippi talking about how poor it is, one of the poorest counties in the country, and it is deeply religious. And he makes that statement. If they would put down their Bibles and pick up math and science books, they might be doing better down here. So indoctrination comes from both sides. It's just that, and let me just say this. Everybody talks about, I don't want my children indoctrinated. I'm going to respond by saying that's bullshit. I think we all Every American is in favor of a child being indoctrinated. As long as what the indoctrination is, is something they favor. I point this out often on my program. By the way, tap the screen. Get your boy up to 50,000 likes. You enjoy civilized dialogue from both sides of the aisle. This is what we do here Monday through Friday. Follow the program. Helps out the algorithms. Brings in more MAGA. In regards to indoctrination. Most of us favor putting your hand over your heart, facing the flag, and saying, I pledge allegiance to the flag. How many elementary school children know what it means to pledge allegiance to a nation? Most of them could not even define it. That is indoctrination. Has nothing to do with math, science, or arithmetic, or anything they do in school. You're indoctrinating patriotism in them. You don't go to school to become a patriot. So we all are in favor of indoctrination. We just disagree with it when it's something we don't like. The same thing would apply to Christianity. How many of the same folks complaining about indoctrinating children in regards to the LGBT community are okay or even suggesting we put Christianity back in schools? Everything about religion is indoctrination. Everything about it, you know, this is the only one and true God and all of that. Everything about religion is indoctrination. So the idea that folks are not in favor of indoctrination is a flat out lie. We all are in favor of indoctrinating a child as long as the indoctrination is something we favor. Uh, look at in the comments. Easy times have created ungrateful children taking our liberties for granted. I don't know about that, um, new old school. 
being African American, I don't. Yeah, I get. Well, I guess you might be right. We are. We do have far more liberties now than ever before. All right. Yeah. Okay. You make a point. Uh, we'll go back to the box and keep it moving with. I think that says Chris logo. Let's try to make. Gotta wait. Tap the screen. Get your boy up to fifty thou. Appreciate you on. This is a backup page, by the way. The main page, the handsome liberal with the final L actually on there. If you want to follow that, that's where we generally are. But this week, due to the TikTok gods, we'll be over here. Chris Logo, good afternoon. What's happening? Not much at all. Talking about Ron DeSantis, do you think he's a better option for MAGA than Trump? I don't. I don't think he's a better option for anybody um, at all. Period. I think. Why do you say that? Well, just based on what is happening almost daily now, what he is doing as a governor, uh, just to a state, and his like frivolous attempts at eradicating a group of people. To me, that just says that if he can do it on a, a gubernatorial level, that if he becomes president, it's just going to amplify that and become much worse. Elaborate on what you mean by eradicating. How is he trying to eradicate them? With the all the anti-LGBTQ laws. Uh, now, I mean, even that was just what I was talking about. And then just stack on top of that is anti-immigration policies. I mean, I haven't been to Florida. I know people in Florida and I watch videos like everybody else on TikTok, whether they're true or not. Look, uh, like the job sites and stuff are empty. There is nothing happening in Florida. Like th this country is run by immigrants. They will do things that people here will not do. I couldn't name you five people right now. I couldn't count on one hand people that would go to Florida and work in a field picking strawberries or oranges or doing what those migrants do for such a small. But wait a minute, in regards to in regards to minor in, re in regards to minor um uh, immigrants, let me say this. And by the way, Niner Man, appreciate the, the TikTok cap. Thank you for your generosity. In regards to immigrants, how do you respond if, if someone like DeSantis or a defender of DeSantis was to say, we don't have a problem with immigrants. We just want you to come in legally. I mean, I, I totally agree with that. I don't, I think myself that, yeah, if you do want to come into the country, you take the proper channels. And I don't I don't have the facts in front of me, but I would have to say that most of those people were documented, but they're making it now that with like the, that you can even be arrested for associating with somebody that's undocumented. So if you have a family of 10 and one of those family members is undocumented, that whole family could go to jail. Well, if the person is violating the law. And you got you, they're hiding out from the law. I mean, I hate to defend this shit because I am liberal, but right. if you've broken into the country legally and you're hiding out from the law and I'm a legal citizen and I give you a place to stay at my home, how is that not aiding and abetting? I don't think an entire family should go down for it. I think if they want to do that, that there should be like a due process for it to, to figure out what, not just, okay, you're... Uh, in the bedroom across from this guy, you're guilty too. Like, how did you know that those people knew that he was undocumented? You know, it could go down like a string of yeah. rabbit holes. I mean, I'm just going to say if, 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 if you were to rob a bank and stay in someone's home that had four or five adults in that home, you're probably going to get arrested. If you're, I mean, of course, the, of everybody course. in that home is going to get arrested until they figure it out. I mean, that's aiding and abetting. But the, to me, I, no, I totally agree with that. But I just see his immigration policies or his anti-immigration policies as extreme. I think they are just like kind of pushing the bounds. And I mean, look what it's doing. And then, you know, stack on top of that, the that little move he pulled with what was it the state, uh, the state's uh, pension fund or whatever, where he reinvested yeah. their money into like some extremely dangerous stock. Uh, just to like pad shareholders and stuff too. It's just crazy. I just think that uh, he's doing too much right now. So, so you believe to... Trump? So you do believe Trump is a better option than than uh, DeSantis? I mean, I think if it came down to them too, that right now, yes, Trump would have a better chance. I absolutely believe that. I would never vote for the guy, but in the Republican eye, looking from a Republican perspective, I think that 
Trump still has the support. Like Trump created this MAGA culture. Well, but wait a minute. Growing. Not even not even from an aspect of support. When I asked you, even from the liberal side, you gave me a laundry list of issues to show the sentence is not a good leader. So even from a liberal aspect, it sounds like you're saying Trump would be a better, even though you don't support him. You make it clear that Trump sounds like a better commander in chief than DeSantis. I mean, I don't want either of them, but since you're putting right. them in position to pick between the two, I would have to say Trump. Okay. All right. That would be my no and argument. One thing too, did you happen? We talked about the other day that Texas House Speaker. Did you watch that video? No, I have not had time to do any damn thing outside of this. <laughs> what yeah, are you? What, what were we talking about again? We, I was on the other day and I, I had brought it up. I just asked if you had seen it. The, the Texas House Speaker, the, they couldn't decide whether he was like just an extremely intoxicated. No, or a no I, didn't, I wanted to see that too. No, I did not see that. Yes, they're saying in the comments, go watch it. Like, I still haven't heard what is what. I'm sure if this guy had a stroke, we would hear about it. Just seeing that the fact that he was probably really drunk is probably why they're just, it just kind of got pushed under the rug. Okay, I'm gonna watch it. I just wrote it down. I'm gonna watch it the moment at the moment this lives in shortly. Yeah, I definitely want to see that. It's good. If he was drunk, next, it's time, next time you talk to me, I will get. Next time you talk to me, I guarantee <laughs> you, I will have seen it. All right, it's Chris. Cool. Hey, Appreciate you coming to you, Tim. Thank you. Absolute, absolute. Hey, I'm going to ask again. Show your boy some love. Tap the screen. Helps out the algorithm. Brings in more MAGA. You know what we tend to favor here. Although I'm getting a lot of folks from the left today, but. Um, yeah, tap the screen, get your boy up to six zero, sixty thousand likes. I'd appreciate that. Joe keeps building Trump's walls, just like we've been doing for decades. They're fooling us. <laughs> wow. All right, let me go back to Z Box. Appreciate you folks that are holding on. We'll go straight to Niner Man. You no, know, we're asking a question. Would Ron DeSantis be a better option for MAGA than Trump? Trump has a hell of a lot of dirty laundry and court cases and shit orbiting them. Do you think DeSantis is a better option? I definitely think Niner so. Man. How you doing, yeah, go ahead. I, I definitely think so. If you, if you just go by polling, uh, Trump is losing in every one except one right now to uh, Biden. But DeSantis... I have not heard that. Yeah, uh, they were just talking about the latest CBS poll where Trump was losing to Biden, but DeSantis was beating Biden by about two percentage points. So, mm. I mean, there's a lot of Republicans that won't vote for Trump again, like myself, that just won't vote. I'll stay home, play Xbox, you know. So, wait a minute. So did you did you vote for Trump in 2016 or 2020? I voted for him twice, but after the way he uh, dealt with losing the election, as we talked about before, and then calling the woman a nasty woman and at the town hall and wanting to put U.S. soldiers on the on the streets is just not very presidential. And now he was civilly convicted of, uh, you know, I don't know what the term you can use on TikTok is, but SA, that's not the type of, you know, all the only honest president we've had in a long time was Obama. I mean, all of our presidents been corrupt. Wait a minute, hold on. You are saying all this shit? Are you sure you voted for Trump? You don't sound yeah, like MAGA. Well, because it's it's and they they always keep the sh the shit in the closet. Joe Biden has a sexual assault accuser against him that they refuse to look into. Tara Reid has been going trying to tell her story, but nobody cares. So Trump's finally brought out in the light, but it's not like these politicians are are honest. Yeah. So but yeah. Do we talk. That's why it's, uh, I'm a Republican, but not a, a Trump Republican. I, I would rather see DeSantis, but DeSantis is pissing me off about all this uh, social war crap, which isn't important in the, in the big picture. Give me, a, give, me a, give me an example of something DeSantis has done to piss you off. Uh, the fight with Disney, because they disagree with his, the, the don't say gay bill, or all these unnecessary laws against uh, the, the trans community. I mean, I think that there's definitely a lot of science out there about how safe this gender affirming care is, but it's not my place to tell somebody's parents 
what they can and can't do. I'm going to be honest with you, Niner man. I'm going to be honest with you. Just in analyzing that conversation, you don't sound like somebody who voted for Trump twice. You don't so sound talking? Republican. I, I'm, I'm admitting I could be wrong, but no, I'm well, saying just analyzing the conversation, you don't sound like that. Oh no, I, I'm more of a Reagan Republican back in the day. Physical responsibility, strong borders, strong military. You know, I'm not for telling people how to live their life. I don't give a a shit what somebody wants to do with their life. But I'm just saying we all almost... When has America... You say you're not for telling people how to live their life. When has America ever been a country that we didn't do that? We've been pro-Christianity, pro-marriages between a man and a woman. Hell, even Obama said marriages between a man and a woman when he first got off. We have always been about telling people how to, what to do with their lives. I mean, even during the Reagan era with Dan Quill getting pissed off with Murphy Brown because a woman on TV doing it without a man went against tradition. I, I don't see a time in American history where we had a, we, we let people be who they wanted to be. Well, no, I mean, I, you're, I agree with you, but I'm just saying now it's uh, went too far to the other direction. I mean, if you, I don't know if you're a Fox News fan or whatever, but big Greg fan, Gutfeld, big fan. Uh, Greg Gutfeld is more like a libertarian. He's always talks about legalizing drugs and making sure they're safe. So there's yes, no he does. Yes, he does. I mean, that's kind of as I gotten older is where I'm starting to. Uh, well, but Greg Gutfeld, Greg Gutfeld is not is also not very religious, and religious people are not going to legalize drugs. Greg well, Gutfeld makes it clear he's not very religious. One of the main reasons I can never vote Democrat is because they're for. Uh, pretty much open borders and uh they don't care about how much money they spend i mean even to go by the cbo report said that if joe biden did nothing we would have saved 880 billion dollars after his first year of office but we only saved 420 wow. because the amount of money he spent were uh, estimated to be uh about 20 percent more in debt under Biden's uh, policies than we would under Trump's because... Uh, well, let me ask you this question. If Joe Biden did nothing and saved us that money, how do you think the Ukraine would be right now? No, no, this was because of the American Rescue Plan. This was before Ukraine. All that money from the American Rescue Plan was about uh, over $400 billion. And the CBO said if that was never done, the the money would have been returned, would have been right around 880 billion people don't believe me you can go right on the cbo the people in the comments and look it up it's not that hard how do you re- so how do you respond to this um former new jersey governor chris christie on this week with george stephanopoulos stated that president trump increased the debt national debt more than any other president before him that he was not good on saving money either he did until biden took office because oh, and a lot of it was because of the uh the the tpp and all the the uh, warp speed and a lot of the other stuff. A lot of people blame the tax cuts, but he also had four percent growth. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I mean, I mean, it I... equals out. Well, when you have to spend all the money and you have as almost a zero GDP because the whole country shut down, it is going to raise the deficit. Yeah. Well, the point I'm trying to make is I think they all, for one reason or another, have spent us into oblivion i mean george bush started a very lengthy war i mean they've all done it just for their own different reasons yeah george bush i mean he went to the wrong country but at least he had some it was a bullshit excuse but it was an excuse he can say the cia told him that iraq had weapons of mass destructions and he was trying to protect the united states from another 9 11. hindsight is 2020 we find out they didn't have any i don't you know something to be honest with you because even president trump said attacking the u.s uh, attacking iraq was the dumbest mistake in u.s history i will say this i don't even know if the u if the cia as you pointed told George Bush that they had weapons of mass destruction. I think to some degree, when you're at their level, like what we're accusing Joe Biden of doing right now in regards to pursuing Trump, you can kind of tell these federal agents what you want to hear to get it reflected back at you. And I, I don't believe that that the Bush administration made a complete mistake. I think that to some degree, folks would point out Saddam tried to kill his dad, and he had a. Vi- I mean, I I do believe there was more to that than simply believing they had weapons of mass destruction. I think they were looking for an excuse, and they got one. And what I was saying about uh, 
Biden and Trump, they're almost clones of each other, except on different side of the aisle. Biden has a sexual accuser. Trump has one. Yeah. Biden has yeah. financial crimes being looked into. So does Trump. I mean, you go down the list, almost every, everything that one's being accused of, the other one has been accused accused of too. And it's, I think it's time for new people on each side. I mean, you look at Biden, he's been criticized. He has the least amount of press conferences in modern history. Yeah. So why well, are they trying to hide? You said what? What are they trying to hide? I heard you talking about Joe Biden. There has to be a reason he doesn't do press conferences. I think the reason Biden is not doing press conferences is like you just stated, he's not going to, you're not going to win any voters with that anyway. If, if Biden came out there and he was, you know, he, he was speaking perfectly, folks would just say he was drugged up on something to get him over the dementia for a short period of time. Cause they, I had people tell me that cause I brought that up during the state of the union address. If he has dementia, how the hell did he speak this good? Or the, the correspondence dinner. How to talk? How the hell did he do that? And folks come up with excuses for how they temporarily set mm-hmm. back the dementia with some kind of drug so he could speak. So I, mean, I, I don't, don't think even he has dementia, but I I know just a medical fact. When you get to that age, your your processing of stuff slows down. I mean, they talk about it all the time. So I don't think what? he has dementia. I'm not going to make fun of the man like that, but I don't think he's that full speed either that one but what's the difference between what's really the difference between biden and trump i mean everything that we're suggesting that biden could get due to old age trump's only four years younger you can get dementia at 60. i mean trump is no spring chicken well yeah trump had a lot of gas too that's what i'm saying i don't think either of them should be either party's choice i mean i'd pick the sanders if i was a democrat i'd probably pick hakeem jeffries I definitely want to pick Gavin Newsom because he has too much baggage, especially the way California is right now. Wow. So, um, in regards to avoiding baggage, I mean, at this point, Ron DeSantis has some baggage. Why not Nikki Haley or Tim Scott? I mean, I, Tim Scott, I don't know uh, much about him. If I got to pick anybody out of Congress, I would have picked uh, Dan Crenshaw from Texas, the Navy ex-Navy SEAL. But that's just because I'm biased. Because the guy with the pants, the guy yeah, with the pants, the guy was in the service. Yeah. And, but I'm just saying, I, I love your 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 lives because you're fair to everybody. One second, um, but no, I voted for Trump twice, man. I, I I had the Trump flag, I had the Trump talking little doll and everything. Was, <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, I was I was full on Trump until he acted like an idiot after. January 6th and so let me so in regards to January 6th let me ask you this question who won the 2020 election Joe Biden did he Hmm. had an option to bring his evidence to the Supreme Court he couldn't produce the goods or wasn't enough evidence if you believe in the system Republicans are supposed to be about law and order you can't shit on the system you're supposed to support so if it didn't work for you I mean, maybe it could have been 100% uh, stolen. Maybe it was. I don't think it was because he couldn't find the evidence. But it doesn't matter. It's not what's true. It's what you can prove. That's what wow. I used to tell, you know, when it's what you can prove. There's a lot of shit that happens you can't prove. I mean, you take the innocence projects, for Christ's sake. Those people were proven guilty, but they were innocent, and it goes both ways. Yeah. Working yeah. Enforcement. So you can't shit on the system that you're. I was in the military. You can't shit on the system you're sworn to protect. He lost in court, and that should have been the end of it. Very well stated. All right. I got to move it on, Niner Man. Appreciate you coming in here. Have a good day. Thanks again. You too. You too. Always a pleasure. Uh, what did that say? Definitely doesn't sound like a Trumper to me. Jordan 9 3. You know, there are some Trumpers that voted for President Trump because they believed what he was doing was in the best interest of the country. Then there are some Trumpers that voted for President Trump because they like him and would follow him anywhere. This guy voted for Trump. If I'm analyzing my last guest properly, if he voted for Trump, in my opinion, he's one of the former. He's just like a Liz Cheney, or he would be just like a Mitch McConnell, or now a Mike Pence where they supported President Trump because they believed he was the best choice 
for the direction of the country. However, we have a lot of folks, some of my beloved MAGA, that are going to support Trump no matter what. And that's a different type of voter. In other words, we need to stop isolating ourselves from North Korea. We need to actually try to maybe make out a deal or something because, you know, st this standoff is not helping the country. So I'm going to go and talk to Kim Jong-un and speak to him personally. MAGA is going to support that. If Trump had stated, I am tired of this bullshit, and I decided last night to bomb these particular nuclear facilities in North Korea, MAGA would have been okay with that too. So the point is, MAGA is a lot of MAGA, not all, because my last caller was just MAGA. But a lot of folks are going to support him by what he does. I mean, he could, he could do this today and change his mind 180 degrees opposite tomorrow. And there are some people that are going to support the change. So in that case, I don't know what else to say. Because you're not going to lose those supporters. Looking in the comments, someone makes a good point. I vote with my wallet, says D. That is true. A lot of people vote based on the economy. However, because a lot of folks will say, well, why the hell do they keep voting for Biden with the economy? Everybody doesn't vote for it with their wallet, though. Some people vote maybe with their choice. For instance, we're now on the cusp of women in regards to pro-choice facing some really dire consequences if they break the law and have an abortion. In North Carolina, they actually are proposing capital punishment, executing a mother-to-be if she has an abortion. A lot of women are going to say, even if you could give me $2 gas again, I'm not going to trade it for a possibility of being, you know, executed. So folks are voting for different reasons. Obviously, if you're transgender, $2 gas don't mean shit to you in this particular election. It does not mean shit to you because Trump has already stated if he wins, he's going to ask Congress to go by the gender that is on your birth certificate. So that would mean if you look at a guy like myself, yours truly, and I decide I want to become the ugliest ass woman you have ever seen and transition to a woman, because Trump has told Congress to go by what's on my birth certificate, I will always be known as a man on all of my documentation. So essentially preventing me from transitioning all together in the eyes of government. That's a total and complete eradication in the eyes of government of transgender individuals. So it doesn't matter how much he can lower gas. If you're transgender, you have no business voting for somebody that's made it clear they're going to ask Congress to get rid of your ass entirely. And he has said it. And I see in the comments, like Angel, Angel has stated, good, there's a lot of folks that support complete eradication of transgender. So it depends on what you're voting for. If you're voting for the economy, a lot of folks are going to go with Biden. But as I pointed out, there's a lot of other reasons to vote. Maybe you believe the planet needs to be protected from, you know, climate change and things like that. I understand the folks on the right don't submit to that, but depends on who you are. Uh, look at in the comments. Tap the screen. Get your boy up to 70,000 likes. 700 plus of you in here. Don't agree with you, says user 608. And I applaud the fact that you have your own mentality, your own mindset to agree or disagree with what you're hearing. That's the whole purpose of the program. You don't have to agree with the host. That's why I give you plenty of time to state your point without fear of being blocked, banned, or censored. Not agreeing with the host doesn't mean a damn thing here. I protect your First Amendment free speech rights just like my own. Elaborate on your point. I'm going to call you out if you say something that makes no sense to me, but I'm not, at, I'm not here to demand you agree with me. I don't know every damn thing either. That's what we're here for. It's because in Washington, they don't reach across the aisle. We're able to do that here. Civilized. Follow the program if you like this shit. All right, look it in the comments. Or better yet, going back to the box. We'll keep it moving with the one and only 52. Is Santos... Is the Senate a better option for MAGA than Trump? No. Why not? I don't think he's ready. I think <laughs> Donald Trump needs to go in as the heavy for four years and then bring in DeSantis. Do you see, with DeSantis currently going anyway, he's expected to announce tonight, do you see DeSantis even being able to survive a fight against Trump to even possibly run in four years. I hope not. Well, 
in four years, yes. The, Trump is pissed. Everybody's come at Trump. He's proved them all wrong. He's pissed. He's going to go in there with a vengeance. Let him Wait. go do all the dirty work, and then we'll vote for DeSantis. You said everybody has come at Trump. He's proved them all wrong. How about E. Jean Carroll in New York, the, the new owner of $5 million of Trump's money? You think he proved her wrong? Uh, I think her whole thing was a trumped up, pun intended, uh, <laughs> trumped up charge. Well, then why, why couldn't he have made a better case? Why didn't he even show up to defend himself? If any of us gentlemen out there was accused of something like this, that's the first thing we would do, certainly if we had his money, is fly out there and look the jury in the eye and say, I didn't do this shit. Why would he have the jury have to take time off work and get that ridiculously low paycheck you get to serve on jury duty? As a juror, I got to be at this shit, and he's not here? Fuck him. You don't see where that might not come into play, where he didn't even have the audacity to show up? You buying a dozen donuts for somebody at Dunkin' Donuts would be affected about the same as Trump throwing $5 million and getting rid of a problem. Okay, so he, so in other words, he chose to just pay it out. It don't matter. Just get that shit behind you, whether, it right, whether it's right or wrong. He's got the money to throw it away. That'd literally be like you stopping, stepping in front of a family and buying their dinner. You know that would affect it's, your then wallet. Why not? If you're gonna, if you're gonna just get rid of a problem, then why not offer her a settlement? Why make it go through trial and make all this stuff come up? He could easily make that go away. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a civil suit, so all she wants is money. So just give her some damn money. I don't think he would waste his time with that. I he think it was all it was all bullshit. He ain't going to waste his time. He's got more important things to do. But at the end of the day, he did waste his time with it. It went on for weeks when he could have made a settlement with her, got her out of the way, put an NDA on her so she couldn't talk about what the hell happened, and it would have been over with. And he but probably wouldn't he have didn't had waste his time. He didn't even go. He didn't go. He didn't waste his time. He's talking about it at every rally, 52. He's wasting well, his time. Yeah, it's as folks would say, as folks on the right would say, some of my beloved MAGA would say, E. Jean Carroll lives rent-free in Trump's head. He's talking about it everywhere. Oh, uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis just launched his presidential campaign. I just got the notice. That's a mistake. I'm telling you it is. What's a you think it's a mistake that Ron DeSantis decided to run? Absolutely. Don't put don't put both your your race engines in the same car. What? What? <laughs> some, for some reason, that's something that they could go anywhere with you. But what about <laughs> what about the possibility with Trump having so many court cases orbiting around him? that something could ultimately cause him not to be able to run for office. If it came down to one of those other candidates, uh, you got Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, uh, Sununu, whatever the hell, some of those other folks, including um, DeSantis all the way. You would go with DeSantis. Absolutely. Okay. So DeSantis is ready. You just want Trump more. Uh, Trump will do a better job in the four years that he has of cleaning up the, the the Department of Justice, cleaning up all the bullshit, and then let DeSantis come in. DeSantis is going to be too soft-spoken. He's he's really going to try to negotiate his way out of shit, where Trump's here's just going to come in and say, you're fired. Is, here's what I'm confusing. You said Trump would be a better at cleaning up all the bullshit and things like that. What confuses me is he ran into 2016 promising to do the exact same thing. And when we look back at the, the four years that Trump served in office, he didn't drain the swamp. He didn't clean anything up. So he, why, he, should, why should we trust that he's going to do what he failed to do the first time? He was he was happy-go-lucky then. He's pissed now. Then, So in other words, he lied the first time because he was too happy to, to actually no, do what he said? No, he, he didn't do. have the as much motivation as he has now. You you got to come on, 52. It sounds like you're making excuses for the man. Either you do what you promised to do or you don't. 
I don't want to hear you happy go lucky or I, you promised to do some shit. Either you delivered or you didn't. Well, I think you'll see a radical difference this time. Based solely on his anger. Based solely on, on all the bullshit. They've been coming at that man continuously since the night of that election and Martha ran it striped like a little bitch. They've been after Trump. They have been after Trump every which way. But, and I don't disagree with you that they came after Trump from day one, but what I have an issue with is when folks act like that is a shock. When you have spent the previous three years before running for office stating that the previous president was born in Kenya and making all kinds of shit up, then you promise if I'm elected, I'm going to drain the swamp, I'm going to name names and get rid of all of the waste. How do you expect to become president and not have resistance from everywhere? He basically stated, if you elect me president, I'm going to be what amounts to a snitch. I'm going to snitch on all Congress. I'm going to snitch on, I'm going to fire a bunch of three-letter organizations. I'm going to come in and upset Washington. Now, a lot of us voters might think that's what America needs. That's fine. But you'd have to understand anybody promising to do that is going to have a hell of a lot of pushback in Washington, right? Oh, and I'm sure he got it, and he's still getting it. You know, you talk about that woman living in Trump's head. Jesus, criminy. I have never, I'm 60 years old. I have never seen an ex-president get talked to about as much as Trump until you went back to Nixon with his Watergate bullshit. But But you don't think... You don't think Trump wants to be talked about like that? It ain't like the man is sitting around like Obama going surfing or something. He's out in the public eye continuing to criticize every damn body. You expect people to just keep quiet? That's why I voted for him to begin with. He's a prick. We don't need we don't need a little clown for our president. We need a son of a bitch that the world fears. They thought Donald Trump was fucking crazy. They didn't know what he was going to do. And that's what we need. All right. I don't I don't know. I look back on the Trump presidency and I don't see the fear. I mean, I see him going to London and they got a big ass blimp up. That's a baby of Trump. I heard Vicente Fox, a former uh, president of Mexico, say we're not going to pay for the quote unquote fucking wall. I heard Justin Trudeau of Canada saying bad things about him. Angela Merkel of Justin Germany. Justin Trudeau. I've seen a lot of folks. He wasn't getting respect from our allies. I didn't see that. Justin Trudeau's a fucking moron, number one. <laughs> number two, Mexico needs to be overrun and be our 51st state. And and then oh, we don't really oh, want them. Oh, come on, come on, 52. You're talking to a black man. You're promoting more colonization of brown people. Now you're talking about taking over Mexico for real? Hey, I I go out and get as tanned as I can every summer. You know, I'm trying to be like Mike. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. You can't take over Mexico. That wouldn't be nice. You know what? They they talked about his collusion with Russia and how he's kissing Putin's ass. La da 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 da. I would rather keep my enemies close like he did with Kim Jong un, like he did with Putin. I want to be friends with them. I don't want to have them pissed off. Right now, no. Putin is pissed off. We would never be in the Ukraine. None of that shit would have went on if Trump was still in office. Never, Mm. ever would it have happened, ever. You're you're not the first to say that. All right, 52, you're not the only person to say that, but appreciate you coming in, man. You know what I got to do. All right, brother, tell your disclaimer about how you don't agree with everything I said. That's okay. (laughs) I don't agree with the part about, I've said before, I don't believe that uh, went into the Ukraine either if Trump was still in office. But I don't think that's necessarily a good thing for anybody involved. I personally believe that Trump has a strong relationship with Putin, has had a strong relationship with Putin even before he became president. And he would have been able to go to Putin and state, I have a legacy to be concerned with. Don't do this under my watch. I will make sure that Ukraine never becomes a member of NATO. We won't give them any weapons or any funding. 
and we'll basically set Ukraine up on a golf tee. You have to just wait four years before you strike it. I'll make sure you can still continue to trade and export and import between Western Europe and everything. I'll leave Russia in great standing. And then that way in 2028, if you want to go into the Ukraine, there you go. But for my legacy, I need to make sure this doesn't happen. And I think he could have easily sweetened the pot up. And because of their relationship, I think Putin would have held off. So, yeah, I do believe that uh, the war under the, the Ukrainian-Russian war would not have happened under Trump. But that's not necessarily a good thing for the Ukraine because it would have given Russia four years to potentially strengthen their military. I do believe Trump is a friend of Putin. For all we know, because, yeah, fancy prancy. Thank you for the hat and mustache. Because Trump is basically adversarial to the Ukrainians. He believes it's a corrupt country. It would not have surprised me if Trump was willing to give Putin intelligence on the Ukraine. I would not have put, I would not have been surprised by that because Trump was not a fan of the Ukrainians at all. Believed they were corrupt, just like Putin did. And could have set the Ukraine, or better yet, Russia in an advantageous position so that in four years they could have won it. All right, I'm going back to the box, though, to Keisha Blue. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the pro. Keisha! Always hey. a pleasure to have you. Hey, we talking about, I already know where you're going to go with this shit, but we talking about um, is Ron DeSantis a better option for MAGA than Trump? I don't see anybody running for Republican or better answer for anybody. First of all, Ron DeSantis just wants, he has turned Florida into Rundera. Into it what? Florida no more. It's not even Florida no more. It's Rundera. Because but they, but the Floridians are but the Floridians are very happy how he's running their not, state. Not all, not not all of them. We can't we can't uh, lump all those people in together. Yeah, yeah. You the hateful point. the <laughs> hateful ones are happy with him because he's doing stuff that they like to see. But what you're gonna realize as soon as they take that milk crate from behind that podium and he steps down, and we see the small man that he really is, literally. Mm -hmm. We're going to realize if you can't go up against Mickey Mouse and Goofy and they don't outsmart you, <laughs> there is no way you can deal with these foreign leaders. So let me say that. No, yeah. we don't. I kind of wonder. I kind of wonder if he's not going to fuck around and cause Disney to leave that state. I'll tell you something. And if he does, that's the end of Florida because that's their biggest money maker. Disney took a run. But what they're doing is really showing what a fool he is and how much sense he does not have. And the people that he appoint are the same way he is. So I'm enjoying laughing at him thinking he had one up on Disney and Disney really just basically saying, get on this teacup if you the right height and come on ride this ride with us. Now, I saw a commercial by Tim Scott and the only thing Tim Scott needs is a gate that goes around a flower bed to put on his teeth so he can close his mouth. Them the only way he's gonna be able to get braces because they don't. What, 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 what no problem do you? Ain't gonna fit. But Tim Scott is. But Tim Scott is a moderate. What, what, I mean, he is not Tim far Scott right. Is, Tim Scott is not a moderate anything but a moderate nonsense talker. Tim Scott, you ever watched Fat Albert? Oh my God! Yes, I did. Caratona that couldn't close his mouth. That's Tim Scott. Tim Scott need to get somewhere and sit down. Nobody's going to vote for him, but somebody who don't have nothing better to do than he done paid 15 or $20 to or took to McDonald's because we're not going to be a fool and vote for Tim Scott. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this, what breaks my heart. I've seen so many people that have gotten so soft when it comes to Vladimir Putin. We could agree as Americans that we all hated him. But ever since Donald Trump got in, now you got people that's for Donald Trump trying to make Putin seem like he went in this war for the right thing and he's not as bad as we think he is and he gets a raw deal. And that's a dangerous thing. When yeah. people start looking at that man as a, a semi-good person, that's when you know the brain has been washed in bleach and, and tied washing powder. It's well, but what what about the notion, just like with Kim Jong Un, 
where Trump was trying to tell the people, listen, the stalemate we've had for generations is getting nowhere and it's, it's moving us closer to World War III. Even though this might be somebody who's a bad leader in your eyes, maybe it's better to open up a dialogue as opposed to constantly being on the cusp of war. You don't think Band-Aid Man got some deals with them? Oh, come on, let's be for real. Come on now. <laughs> what did you say, Band-Aid Man? Well, you know why I told you why I called him that. I told you Storm of Day say he's so small he can wear a Band-Aid for underwear. So listen, what I'm saying is this. Band-Aid Man was friends with these folks before he got in office. I'm willing to bet you. And when this, when this, this, um, when this stolen documents case come out, I bet you we gonna find out that he was selling us out. Mm. Even before so you, he got whoa, 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 whoa. so you said. believe you believe the former commander in chief was potentially selling out the country? He runs on America first. Listen, he America first is the bank product because that's the only thing he America first on. He won America first when he didn't bring none of his businesses back after saying he was gonna bring jobs back to the U.S. Yeah. He won America yeah. first on that. He won America first when he was trying to pull us out of NATO, knowing that if anything happened, we would need those those countries support. He won first America first on that. Where's yeah. America first? He won America first when he went over there and let, let all them Taliban folks out and, 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 and did the deal behind the pre, the president over there back. Come on now. What, what when when was he America first? Okay, all right, I can't argue. The only thing America folks on is those all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun that he was getting from McDonald's. Yeah. Let me interrupt and say something. I've seen this pop up in the comments. I didn't I didn't know what I was reading until I'm seeing it now. Tina Turner. She passed away? When I'm did Tina seeing... Turner pass away? Yeah, apparently it must have just been announced because I've seen several folks in the comments. Uh, you know, we don't need another hero and all of those songs from the 80s. Wow. She was I 80 know plus. That. I thought in... the big wheels kept on turning. I didn't I don't know. Well she you know, she was 80 plus. She, yeah, she lived over in she, well, she Tina actually... and Lil, Tina and Lil the score she was promised in from a man too. Yeah. Yeah, she actually denounced her US citizenship. She gave it up. She was she was a citizen of Switzerland or Sweden over there, and she actually stated in her last interview that she had been paying taxes in the U.S. for you know and hadn't been over here in 20 years and was like, I don't plan on coming back. But she gave up her U.S. citizenship, so she was not even a citizen of America anymore. We wow. still love Touch her. We still yes, love her. Music. She was here. Yeah, good music. When she was here. She paid into enough to America. Well, hopefully she's up there beating Ike's we ass. Don't now, need, because... now we just ain't. Now we just ain't gonna. Now, now when she was up there, numb yum whoring gatio. Now we just ain't gonna set she up in heaven. Now. Yeah. Well, she hopefully might be she, on to the side. Hopefully, hopefully Ike Turner didn't get up there. Otherwise, she might be getting some more ass with Boy, But I gotta move it on. I don't gotta move it on. Ike. Don't don't talk about Ike. <laughs> All right. All right. Anime. All right. Anime. I gotta All go. Right, friend. Bye -bye. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. What this is, this is indeed a lunch break live, like we always do about this time. I appreciate you folks rolling with your boy. You could be anywhere on TikTok. The fact that you're always here with me is it is indeed an honor. 73,000, you guys were tapping the screen. Not too bad. I can't, not too shabby, as they would say. I can't argue with 73,000. Nevertheless, we are expected to hear Ron DeSantis with Elon Musk on Twitter tonight. So it probably will be a topic for fodder in the near future. But let's see, because Trump has got to respond to that. Trump is going to respond. We know that Trump does not like other folks in the spotlight. So when folks say, well, Trump lives rent free in your head and you can't stop, stop talking about Trump, that's because Trump does not want us to stop talking about him. How? What would you be willing to bet if Ron DeSantis announces tonight at 6 p.m. that he is running for the nation's highest office? There's only six more hours left in the day, from 6 p.m. to midnight. That's what are the chances that Trump is going to say something about that in those remaining six hours? I would tell you it's quite high. Trump gets talked about because Trump wants to be talked about. It's your boy Tim, the handsome liberal. I got to go.